Good morning, everybody. Today I'll be talking to you about uh, a case study. So even though we're talking about the future here, this is very cutting edge. Our latest case study from um, Banasai Mine in Laos, and it's a digital twin value chain optimization. My co-authors are Scott Cowley, who's the General Manager Tech Services of the panelist, and the Senior uh, Resource Geologist, James Carpenter. So many of you would have heard of the term digital twin. I'm just going to give a quick definition of what I mean by it using Wikipedia. Just I checked it last night just to make sure it was still up to date. Digital twins integrate inter Internet of Things data with machine learning, artificial intelligence and spatial networks to give you an ability to simulate in a live um, way a process or okay so why would you want to do that there's a couple of good reasons the first reason is you might want to be able to see what's going to happen in the future so that's for preventing downtime or looking at planning forward playing forward a, a process like a schedule and seeing how that schedule is going to play out and then finally the other thing that's quite distinctive about a um, digital twin is the ability to do what if scenarios so that's your ex virtual experiments, right? And I'll give you some good examples of, the, of that shortly. Now, to start off, I wanted to talk about geology because when we talk about value chain optimization in mining, I'm an engineer, a mining engineer. My, I've got colleagues, metallurgical engineers at Petra. We find that geology, if you can get the geology throughout the whole value chain, you can really start to understand where some of our issues are in terms of why we don't always get the res results we're expecting. And on this little example, there's two rocks here. The top rock is the same rock type from the same mine, five metres apart. Have a look at the, that value there, UCS, that's the way we measure strength in rock mechanics. And we use UCS on almost every design aspect in the mine value chain. We use it for geotech, we use it for drill and blast, we use it for um, sag mills, crushes, you name it. And have a look at that same rock type, factor of four difference. And this, this is what's underlying, and this is why if you're going to have a digital twin in mining, you need to integrate your data. Okay, so that's why we're doing the integration. We've been doing this now for over three years. Um, we actually got a mining magazine award back in 2016 for our first case studies in this area. At the time it wasn't fully productionized so we've moved from being a study based approach to a full productionized version which is now what we call Maxter. We take about 12 weeks to integrate the data because in mining we don't have standardized data format so there's a bit of service work required and then it takes an, only an hour to get this into production so the value up is quick coming forward. These are some of the examples, these are some of the simulations that we've done so far with Panost. So we've done a recovery problem that they have, and I'm going to show you that one in a minute. Drill and blast, sting optimised to different rock types, and then finally actual process optimization. So that's the set points in the processing plan. So to do this, the real enabler is of this is the ability to track the ore. Because once you can take spatial data and convert it into a time series, that enables you to do machine learning algorithms. And to build our models, we will typically use a year or two of data. And that will include everything from the geology, drill and blast. It can include weather and other factors that may impact on the process as well. In this case, it's a small mine. It was only 5.12 gigabytes. Sometimes it's a couple hundred gigabytes. So what does that mean? What is the value chain in mining? This is all familiar to us. We've got geology, blasting. We've got load and haul, obviously. We've got liberation and we've got um, separation, and then we obviously got metal. So the, the game here is obviously to maximise the metal produced at the quality specification that you're needing to sell it at. So how do we, how do we productionise this stuff? There's a very simple way. If you're looking at your, your long-term planning, you can productionise these machine learning algorithms into standard mine planning software that all the mine sites use now. We've already done that with MapTech. MapTech is a partner of ours. And so their scheduling engineers now can do optimization, planning, design with the latest recovery predictions, which are based on two years of data. So this comes from a paper that they published at the Complex All Body Conference last year. 
We've also, this is our drill and blast simulation. You can see that we're predicting versus actual tons throughput. I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute. So that's the drill and blast. Mine optimization, once you've got really, uh, we call it dynamic optimization because a lot of optimization mining has assumptions that aren't based on actual mining um, feedback loop. So it's dynamic because we're using the actual mine performance in the plant or in the drill and blast or crushes and feeding that back into the optimization so that you get much more accurate forecasting, scheduling, um, design. Yeah, so that's what it's all about. That, that gap between what we think we're gonna get and what we actually get, this is, this is a real enabler for that. Finally, in the processing plant, we've also got digital twin simulation in the processing plant. I won't go into that one in much detail today, but um, if you'd like to know more, please come and see me at the stand on that one. This is our machine learning model being deployed into existing mine planning software. This is Banasai mine in Laos. Um, it's a small mine, but it was a perfect opportunity to test out this. Those pink and red blocks are the low, um, sorry, high tailings grade blocks. That means they're the blocks where they're sending lots of their precious metal out to the tailings dam. And they wanted to know where that is, obviously, because they don't want to send waste to the, to the plant. So this was really important. And this is their, like, their case study. They, they've been presenting this themselves and saying, we're managing this situation now. Now we know what, where the ore is and where, it, where it's waste. This is our drill and blast simulation. What we've got here, I'm showing you here, is the predicted versus the actual. This is so that when you're doing a simulation, you actually can see that the underlying model is reasonably accurate. Because there's no point doing a simulation if your underlying model is flawed. So then we change the burden and spacing down the bottom using historical data, and we can see what effect that would have. So if, if you, on average, check, reduce your burden and spacing in that particular geology, then that's the effect. You would have a slight uplift in the sag mill throughput, for example. And this is all driven by complex geology. There would be 20 different intrinsic rock properties driving that, um, every one of those predictions. Right, so I would like now to just acknowledge our collaboration partners, because obviously solving something that's been a bit of a challenge for mining for a number of years hasn't happened without a lot of um, great collaboration. So we have a project with Mets Ignited that is partially funded by the government and also matched funding, obviously, by industry. Barrick and McMahon are funding that. We have Panost as our max to collaboration partner, um, and we thank them very much for enabling us to present this case study to you today. We also, would, I would also like to mention that we are working with other platforms to providers. So MapTech's obviously a really big name in mine planning, but there are plenty of others. MaxMine's a smaller um, business improvement online. But the, the point here is that by collaborating with these companies, we can get machine learning into operations really quickly. So that's what I see is missing, is just how long it can take otherwise. And we're trying to identify all the different opportunities to get the dynamic um, feedback into mining. Um, yeah, that's, I think I've got a little bit of time for questions, so that's great. So would anyone like to ask me about this case study or about the Maxter? No. Did it, well, did anyone want to see that um, the drill and blast simulation bit? Ask about that because I usually get a lot of questions about that one, about understanding what that's actually going on there. I might just spend that time to explain it a bit better. You can change the timeline along the bottom. That's shown on a shift by shift basis, but you can change that to weekly, monthly, quarterly, and see what effect it has over um, different time frames. The other thing is you can change that to be not drill and blast. You can change it to set points in the um, sag mill. So we have another version of this, which is about optimising the set points in the, um, in the processing plant. So it's up to you which levers. So if you're a mining engineer, you're going to want to look at drill and blast levers and schedule levers. 
uh, that affect throughput of the sag mill. If you're a metallurgist, you're going to want to see a different set of levers there and you're going to see what effect they have. And it's all interrelated to the and played, related to that geology. Yes, Steve. Yes, so we can play, you mean like, can we play them, put them on any platform? Yes, so can you be supporting any cross Yes, that's right. All you need to play forward your um, schedule into a Maxter, and it's a web service, is your, the time period and then the, all the blocks in that time period. So that might be, in one month there might be... Um, 10,000 blocks. So you send those blocks to the web service and we send you back a new block model all populated nicely with your predictions. And then that, mean, that means that your mine planning people can quickly um, use that to do dynamic optimization. If you haven't heard of this before, it's because it's really new. So don't feel like this is really cutting edge <laughs> for our mining. And it's, I'm quite excited as a mining engineer who's been trying to design with rock for many all my career, whether it was as a mining engineer doing drill and blast or as rock mechanics engineer trying to stop things falling in, that it was, it's been a problem, the, the uncertainty around our ability to measure the mechanical properties of rock particularly. Yes, I think that's time's up. So thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>